George Graham was born in, near Carlisle in Cumberland, and at a young age he moved to London, where he was apprenticed in watchmaking and clockmaking. He quite interestingly married the, the niece of Thomas Tompion, who was also a famous watchmaker and clockmaker at the time. And he basically uh, was one of our key figures in watchmaking and clockmaking. If you actually look back in the 17th and 18th century, London was a great place for watch and clockmaking. And Tompion and George Graham were two leading lights of that, of that era. In terms of what some of the work that they did, they were involved in astronomy and they were very keen on looking at planetariums and they created the first orrery which was a device which could actually show the sun in the centre and mechanically would also show the moon, the earth orbiting around the moon, Mars uh, and on, on a, a mechanical device. And it was quite a fascinating uh, invention that they came up with and did subsequent orreries as well. In terms of uh, the brand today, uh, it's actually based in Switzerland, but it still respects the tradition of English watchmaking. Founded by a gentleman called Eric Loth, this is one of his pieces, and it's a, a watch called the Chronophyter 1695. 1695 is an important date in, in George Graham's life, uh, it's when he was born, and if you actually look at the piece, you'll see that it has this, this device, this trigger device, on the left-hand side of the case. Not only chronographs have an actuation button at 2, two o'clock and a reset button at 4 o'clock. This has it on the opposite side. You might wonder why. But Eric Loth is actually an engineer by trade. And looking at the ergonomics, he soon said, well, you know, the fastest acting digit is actually the thumb. So why not actually, if you're going to have a chronograph to measure its finite piece of uh, time, time uh, intervals, why not position it here on the left hand side of the case? And that's what he did. And so it's quite intuitive to actually start and stop the chronograph with the thumb. This actually has a central chronograph seconds hand here, and at six o'clock it has a 30 minute chronograph counter, which is actually stale. It has this lovely railroad track just on, it, on the outside of its in the periphery. It's a day aperture at three o'clock, and we have applied patterns and Roman numerals here at 9 o'clock and noon, and also at 3 o'clock. This particular model is presented in this lustrous, this gorgeous 18 karat gold case. And when you actually turn it over, you're presented with a gorgeous engraving of Greenwich Observatory. And Greenwich Observatory uh, is, is basically where, where, if you will, navigation and time a lot of it is based there, it's where the start of every day begins. It's right on the prime meridian. You can straddle both the eastern and western hemisphere at the same time. And it would be, be logical for it to be on here on the back of this watch because of, of Graham's fantastic history and relationship with Greenwich Observatory. There's an aperture here, uh, uh, just at the base of the, uh, of the sapphire crystal, which allows the, uh, the wearer to actually see the adorned oscillating mass, it is a self lining watch, it's automatic. You can see it adorned with Coeur de Genève. And also you can see the balance wheel as well, as positioned here. It's a very sumptuous, a very luxurious timepiece. And it comes on a, a gorgeous leather strap, brown leather strap, which augments the warmth of the, of the offering. And it comes with this pin buckle. 